Thanks for joining us for Baptist Press this week. Our guest today is Shane Pruitt, and in this episode, he's going to help us think through some serious issues that students are facing, issues like anxiety and depression. We'll talk specifically about the challenges that our students are facing and how pastors and churches and even parents can help those students. Stay with us for Baptist Press this week. Well, Shane, thanks for joining us for Baptist Press this week. Uh, we're glad to have you back on the program. I think you may be our first returning guest to Baptist Press this week. Um, so we, we're, we're grateful for that. In a previous episode of Baptist Press this week, we, we began, we talked about kind of broad issues that students are facing. And one of the ones that we discussed was mental health. And we talked about coming back to that. And so in this episode, we want to do that. So um, let's talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Uh, first question, we'll just start with a broad question. What are some mental health issues that are being faced by today's students? Yeah, well, hey, first of all, thank you so much for having me on again. I always love our conversation. And and I didn't know that, the first returning guest. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're working on a T-shirt or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm ready for it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, when it comes to Generation Z and, you know, at the time of this conversation, when we say Generation Z, the easiest way to think about that generation are those currently just graduated from college in college and teenagers. And so, you know, with Generation Z, even before the pandemic, there was a higher rate of depression, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts, anxiety, even before the pandemic. And so a lot of things, you know, I know get blamed on the pandemic, but really I always say the pandemic didn't create new problems. It just kind of poured fuel on the problems that were already there to now, according to Barna and latest research from Barna is anywhere between 40 to 45 percent of Gen Z say they struggle with feelings of depression, anxiety, or loneliness. Um, and so they were already considered the most depressed generation and now even more so. And so really in those areas of depression, anxiety, and then feeling of loneliness, which is interesting because so many of them are on social media, which is supposed to connect the world. Hmm. So ideally, they're the most connected generation and at the same time, the most lonely generation as well. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, you mentioned social media. How, how is it different now than maybe it has been in the past, specifically when it comes to anxiety and depression that, that students are struggling with? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you think of uh, you know, latest statistics that tell us like over half the world is on social media now. So mm -hmm. 4 billion people, and you think there's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world, over 4 billion are on social media. And Tim Elmore and his team have put out some great research uh, even recently that says most psychologists, therapists, and counselors, all of them say there is a direct correlation between screen time and feelings mm -hmm. of depression and anxiety. So I think it's just more social media platforms. You know, there was a time maybe it was a uh, Zanga and then it was like MySpace and then, mm -hmm. it, you know, and then it was Facebook. Well, now there's multiple, there's Twitter, there's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's Twitter. And so just so many different options. And so, so much of Gen Z are spending so much time on screens. And then if they're not on social media, then they're using their phones and tablets to binge watch things on Hulu and Netflix. And so there is a direct correlation between the amounts of screen time and levels of anxiety, depression, loneliness, and hopelessness. And so uh, in just a minute, we want to talk about what pastors can do. We want to talk about what parents can do. Um, but before we get to that, so let, let's go right now to screens, since, since you brought that up. I mean, is, is the right answer to just, you know, to take them away until you're 18? Um, what, what, what's the balance there? Because it, it is so hard being parents of middle schoolers, at, you know, at our house. I know you've got uh, kids that are pretty close to that, that demographic. Um, it, it's hard to figure out that balance. Yeah, absolutely. Brent. And, you know, we have, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, we have six kids that are mm -hmm. 16 and under. And so we was like, that is a prayer request. And so our <laughs> oldest is 16. So she's currently the only one with a, a cell phone. And mm -hmm. so we can take two approaches, right? You can go, okay, we just don't care anything about our kids being on screens and we're not going to monitor it and we're just going to let them do their thing. Or you can take the other approach and go, hey, all screens are bad and the internet is a tool of the devil. Well, I think God can redeem all things, right? Right. So social media and the internet, if you think about it, can accomplish 
the Great Commission in a way that we have never seen before, that literally you can share the gospel through a video or a click of a button around the world. So it can be used for God's glory. It can be used for the advancement of the kingdom and the gospel in a healthy way. Um, but we all tend to run to unhealthy things. So as parents, we have to be involved. I think there's this healthy balance to go. If you're going to have a phone, you're going to have a social media, use it for the glory of God. View your social media as a mission field and you're like a digital missionary. But we also have to, to parent and disciple and limit that as well. Um, I always say this, listen, parents, if you're paying the bill of your kid's cell phone, that is not their cell phone. That's your cell phone that you're bar letting them borrow. So mm. be that parent that does random surprise checks on your kids' phones. Look at their DMs. Uh, look at the things they're looking at. Um, read their text messages because, you know, anybody can be their friends, but only we can be their parents. So I think we have to parent and be a parent and be very aware of what our kids are looking at, exposing themselves to, but also the limit of time that they're on there as well. Mm, that's helpful. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about that, that anxiety, that depression, and specifically uh, what that looks like, and, and then what parents and pastors uh, can do to try to step in the gap there and help. So stay with us for just a little bit more uh, with Shane Pruitt on Baptist Press this week. All right. Good there. Okay, we'll just keep moving. So, All right. Yeah, yeah. Shane, thanks for staying with us uh, for Baptist Press this week. Uh, helpful information there as we just begin to think about broad uh, strokes when it comes to anxiety and depression, about social media, screen time, thing, things like that. Well, let's begin to get a little bit more narrow on this. So when it comes to anxiety, um, just thinking specifically about anxiety, well, what do you hear from student leaders, um, uh, that what they're seeing, what they're experiencing, uh, what they're having to react to in families, specifically when it comes to students? Yeah, I think especially in the areas of anxiety, and let me address this up front. I think there are very real levels of anxiety that are maybe just completely out of control for a student, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's some kind of chemical imbalance. It's trauma-based to where that student really needs professional care, professional help. Where, in a, for lack of a better term, something's broken in them mm -hmm. and they really need help, right? And so we have to be okay with God's common grace of doctors and medicine and counselors and therapists to go, hey, God can still heal. And sometimes he heals through those means. Just like mm -hmm. if a child had a broken arm, we wouldn't say, hey, well, just try harder to get over that. We would yeah. get them the care they need. And so I want to say if a student has very real needs, we want to get them the care they need. But when we talk about the everyday levels of maybe anxiety, I think a lot of it can be related to screen time and social media. I mean, just one example, if you think about it, when you and I were younger, if we weren't invited to a party or to a gathering, we wouldn't find out about it until maybe days later or weeks later. Or we may never find out about it. If a teenager is not invited to something today, they're aware of that in very real time because they're seeing the videos being posted and the pictures being posted. And so they realize immediately what they're missing out on. They see a lot of photos of really pretty people that have been doctored and filtered. And so now they're comparing themselves to that. Um, usually people only put their best foot forward on social media. So they seem lives that seem perfect and happy. And they go, well, my life's not perfect and happy. Maybe there's something wrong with me. And I think all those things drive up levels of anxiety. But also, I also want to talk about there. I believe there's a, especially with young people, there's a social contagion a little bit to anxiety, mm -hmm. meaning this when we were younger, maybe teenagers or college students. Uh, if you remember, we all thought we had ADD or ADHD. You know, whether we ever went to a doctor or not, whether we were ever diagnosed with that or not, we all thought we had it. You know, we would even mm. say, oh, I can't do that because my ADD is acting up. And <laughs> We may have never even went to a doctor. We just were self-diagnosing. If you work with college students or teenagers at all, you realize there's also a lot of young people that are self-diagnosing themselves with anxiety, right? Maybe yeah. somebody in their friend group is anxious or struggles with anxiety. So now the whole friend group thinks they're anxious. And so I think we also, as leaders, as parents, as pastors, we got to disciple students to go, hey, your feelings are a gift from God to worship him with. They were never meant to be your idol or your dictators. Um, and so we got to give them a proper biblical view of their feelings. And we also need um, to help educate them of where they need to go with these feelings. Meaning this, we don't need 15-year-olds 
diagnosing other 15 year olds with depression and anxiety. We need mm-hmm. adults involved in those conversations. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. And so I guess depression just naturally flows out of anxiety. I mean, if you, mm-hmm. you know, if you're overcome with a fear of missing out and it makes you anxious because you realize you didn't get invited to the uh, birthday party or you don't look like this person that, that you're tracking um, on TikTok, then, you know, I mean, it's totally understandable that the way to feel about that is down. And, yeah. and, and, you know, depression just follows right, right in step there. Yeah, that's right. And I think when you're young and we all were like this, is that you think whatever happens that day, uh, mm-hmm. like that's the end of the world, right? Mm-hmm. You know, as you get older, you realize, hey, I didn't get invited to this or I didn't get to be a part of this. It's OK. This life is a marathon. I think when you're mm-hmm. a teenager, if someone breaks up with you or someone unfriends you or unfollowers you, it's you think it's the end of the world. So mm-hmm. everything starts crashing down in one moment. And so, so what do you say to, to pastors who reach out to you, student pastors, um, pastors in churches where they're, they're the only pastor, you know, by, by vocational pastors who say, I've, I've got some college or high school students in our church and their families are coming and they're asking me, what do we do about this? What do we, how do we handle, you know, my kids who are saying they feel anxious all the time or struggling with depression? What, what can pastors do uh, to, to help serve those families? Sure. Yeah. And so many, and we could talk about this the rest of the day, but just a couple that I want to highlight is, is first of all, you know, teach the Bible, teach Mm -hmm. a pop, you know, a a proper biblical view of your emotions and of Mm -hmm. your feelings, you know, teach a proper biblical view of, um, of what it means to go to the Lord with these things. But also I would say cultivate an atmosphere where people can speak up when they're struggling. I think sometimes um, people are struggling, but they don't feel like they can speak up because they're mm-hmm. afraid of how others are going to view them or some of the the statements that are going to come back their way. And so I'd say also cultivate an atmosphere where people can speak up when they're struggling, because we had much rather people speak up than suppress it down or run to other unhealthy things. So I'd say develop a proper biblical view of your emotions and feelings in your church that comes from biblical teaching, discipleship but also cultivate an atmosphere where people um, can speak up. And then also I'd say, um, if you have a licensed counselor in your your ministry or a member of your church or a Christian counselor, uh, really get them involved in your church. If you go, hey, we're a smaller church, we don't have that. Then I would say, try to find a local Christian counselor or a counseling agency that you can have a partnership with. That way, when you encounter people, that really is outside of your equipping the needs that they have, you can quickly point them to a counselor. I think one of the most dangerous things we can do as Christian leaders, as pastors, is to really start trying to guide people in areas that we're not equipped for, especially in emotional and mental health. So let's have a great partnership with somebody that we can really point people to. Yeah. And those things obviously dovetail right on with what a pastor would share with a with a parent. And so mm-hmm. so talk talk about that for a Christian parent who's watching and uh, really trying to help their their child uh, process through these things. Yeah, absolutely. I would just say be an aware and involved parent. You know, um, I think it's so easy for us sometimes to let those screens babysit our kids. And we can't do that. Like, we have to be aware. Like, know your child better than anybody else does besides the Lord himself. Like, if you see them sad, if you see them unhappy, if you see them down, if you see their personality changing, you got to get involved, ask the right questions. I want to go back to like, hey, check that phone. Once again, that is not their phone. That is your phone. Um, And so have access to that. And they may not like it in the moment, but in the long run, they'll understand what you're trying to do for them, you know? Um, And so I would just say, hey, be aware, ask good questions of your students. Um, Let your teenagers and, and, and children, and even if they're in college, let them know you're a safe place to come to. Uh, mm-hmm. I always say, tell parents and, and really people working with young people, uh, one of the greatest gifts you can have is the ability to control your face, meaning like make it safe for them to come to you. And they're not mm-hmm. a scared of the look that's going to be on your face because you look shocked or angry or disappointed. So be able to control your face, make it safe for them to come to you, check their phone, check their stuff, um, but also ask good questions. And then when you realize they really do need help, then take them to an area or to a person where they can get real help from. Yeah, yeah that's good. We sure do appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. Uh, these are these are very they're very real things and they're very important things. So so we appreciate you 
uh, not only here at Baptist Press, but, but what you're doing there with the North American Mission Board speaking to them. Yeah, such an honor. Thank you so much, my friend. I'm so thankful for y'all's ministry. And so I love when we can just collab together and have these great conversations. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us for Baptist Press this week. Make sure to visit baptistpress.com where you can sign up for our morning and afternoon email. We have some brand new products there as well. We're calling them newsletters. They focus on leadership and missions, public policy, and more. They come to your inbox once a week. Sign up for all of that at baptistpress.com.